Can MGTOW lead to wealth? Of course it can. And it's not just the fact that a guy being on their own, and men going their own way. And I'd say the same for women. Um, if women went their own way. And I've no problem with a woman's movement of going their own way as well, because at the end of the day, um, they're both getting away from the same problems. In the fact, if a woman is highly functional and capable of looking after herself, then why not? Um, but back to the MGTOW side. Um, first thing you've got is taking responsibility for yourself. This is why I want to talk about the motivational side and the, the actual basis of a lot of this stuff. It's recognizing your own responsibilities, recognizing your own independence, recognizing your capabilities, um, recognizing where you want to go in life. That's all part of the MGTOW stuff. It's, it's not an us, it's not a we, it's not, um, I'm not sure, I'll try this for now. It is actually setting down the ground rules of your life. As such, it can lead to wealth for the first, you know, for example, getting your own home and at the same time paying it off with no, no risk of somebody being able to take half of it, along with the fact that you're probably going to be more business focused because you're as a independent person. Um, you're going to be more focused on your career and stuff to generate the wealth and everything else that you're looking for. Now, I will actually reinforce this with some of the stuff relating to schooling. A lot of the best schools do not have mixed populations. They're men, uh, sorry, boys or girls schools. That's a, there's a reason for that. And that, that is the fundamental reason. If you remove all that relationship toxicity, toxicity that you get when you're in your teens or whatever, where you're in love with this or whatever, you know, it's all mixed up, your emotions and everything else as you're going through that phase of transition, then your focus is more on your, your studies. At the same time, in a MGTOW environment, it, if you get into it earlier on, then you're going to find you can pay your house off before you're 30. You're going to be in an environment where you're completely independent and non-reliant on anybody else. And at the same time, you fundamentally understand where your risks are in life. And predominantly, although people will have employment risks, the biggest risks are always going to be relationships. Always. You know, that unexpected child, the um, meeting somebody that you ended up in a relationship for a couple of years and then she's trying to take half the house and expecting to get a uh, regular payment out of you. Recognizing those things and just saying, look, I live on my own. Now, one of the people that I suppose is probably Miktao, um was... Um, Cyril, he, he used to, well, he, I, the, Russell and Doral's department store in Worcester. They, the guy lives on his own. I don't think it's changed. Um, he used to go with things like the, maybe well, he's still involved in things like the buffs and things. But he's a multimillionaire. Um, he owns faithful overalls that make, I don't know if he's still there, but he used to make military clothing. Um, he made a load of massive orders for the, like uh, the original Gulf War and stuff. Um, but the guy's worth probably, I don't know, 30 million, yet you don't see him particularly with anybody. He used to come into the, his store, which was a, a big department store, and he would hang around until he set, hit a set amount for the day, then he would go home. Because that, that's how, I mean, he was extremely wealthy, don't get me wrong, but I mean, he would buy like these knives in from China that were all like this, and you get a nice block. He's paid 36 cents or something, 36 pence, sorry, 76 pence for a knife set in a block because he's bought 30,000 of them and he's selling them, I think there is somewhere like seven, seven pounds a set or something. Guy's a, guy, guy's an extremely good businessman, but even with the staff, because I was there to actually do the rip out, dismantling the building, um, because it had actually been, they paid him, paid him a large amount of money to expire his tenancy 10 years early. 
Yeah, I mean, they gave them millions to actually le vacate the building, uh, but I had to go back to the original um, setup. So I'd take all the building sections out, which was really good in the Christmas rush because he didn't want the store closing either. And I'm taking sections of the building out while the, the thing's in full Christmas mode, but another story for another day. But I would say he was my, he was my original MGTOW guy from what I had seen of him and ex experienced around him. He's a very switched on individual, very wealthy. Um, he'd only ever been seen with a, a woman from London that he just seen now and again. He was completely independent and business focused. Now, financially, the guy's already rich. He was, his father was rich anyway, his parents were rich. But they, the point being is they built that themselves, that's their own business. But I think the faithful overalls was his as well, in the sense that he, he built that up and I'm sure he's got other businesses and bought another department store as well. Um, but the point being is, he's very independent. There was no woman getting her title on his money. There was no woman getting part ownership of his businesses. There was no woman getting involved in his legacy. Um, so yes, it can lead to that. And one of the things I will say, if you look at high functioning people in the sense of in the business environment, you'll find a lot of them are not like normal relationships and stuff. Um, people from the Cadbury's family, for example, will go off skiing and leave the kids at the um, school during the school holidays and stuff. Because they send them to boarding schools and stuff to get them to be stronger and more independent. Pretty brutal, eh? <laughs> but the thing is, that's the sort of stuff that goes on with people at the ones in the top of the business and stuff, they are taught from childhood to be very independent and aggressively do it. Their parents do it to them. At the same time, <coughs> a lot of the kids are not seen as children, but a necessity to pack, carry on a legacy. Now, I know that a lot of this stuff sounds quite severe, but at the same time, the point being is, these people are very successfully on a wealth front and it comes down to independence, securing their wealth, uh, limiting access from others to their wealth and fundamentally they are self-functioning. Self they have a plan, they know where they're going, they're developing this around that. They are not looking at something and going, well, we'll see how it works out or they have a plan from day one and that's what I like about MGTOW a lot of it is you can set yourself up to where you want to be whether you want to retire in the Philippines or whether you get, you're just coming out of school and getting your first job and you want to go well I want to be the best at this well instead of just going I want to be how am I going to be and set it up to do it it's personal development strong personal development and personal security thanks for watching